too early and I don't have the block height because I erred and my block clock just refreshed like five seconds ago. I say just keep recording. Man, Bitcoin problems. Well, what is up, punks? Um, this is episode 268 of Block Digest at block height. Um, you'll find out in about 20 seconds <laughs> on Sunday, May 9th. <laughs> What's up, we guys? Are all, we're all in darkness. It's we not, await no, the clock. No, no. Are there even blocks anymore? Eh? You block could say 682,807. That... I don't believe that. It didn't come from the block clock. Somebody said it in the chat. It's a lie. Do not trust the height. Verify. Verify the height. You could I... say that Shinobi is clock blocked. <laughs> Doge is 57 cents, people. This is what matters. Yeah, I think that, dude, my mind is still blown by the fact that yesterday when I did the math, um, Dogecoin was 79% of Litecoin miners' income. Like, that is still mind-blowing to me. Loving it. Get rich, miners. The incentive games are afoot, which um, I actually think kind of leads perfectly into this first story. So, yeah. Um, real funny thing. Um, this is something people have been calling out about Ethereum and on chain order book type stuff for literally years. Um, to the point where there is an official term for it minor extractable value. And pretty much it's the idea that when, when you have people trading on these DeFi DEX nonsense things, um, you know, the miner has to put that transaction in a block for that trade to go through and for you to make the profitable trade. What happens if the miner decides, oh, that looks profitable. I, I'm just going to put my own transaction in here that does that trade instead of you. And um, I'm just going to keep the money. Well, um, F2 pool for their Ethereum miners is now running automated bots that do this for certain smart contracts and then split up the money with the miners. So th there's literally a mining pool who has rolled out the functionality and as a service for their miners to front run all of the DeFi morons and, and get the, the profitable trades before they can and just keep the money for themselves. It's actual ETH mining pool doing that now cool so it's like it's like a cartel it's profit distributed front running i'm loving this and it, you know i'm just gonna i just have to kind of point out that maybe just maybe this fundamentally breaks the entire concept of doing trading based on order books like this on a blockchain I don't know. It's got to make it way more profitable to mine in that pool than not mine in that pool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you get income here that you don't get elsewhere, then here sounds a lot more profitable. Oh, this sounds very weaponizable. I'm, I'm loving this idea. I mean, if, if Bitcoiners are right in pointing out this kind of incentive issue for years, then inevitably what should happen is all of the other mining pools start doing this until you just get to the point where almost all Ethereum miners are front running all the DeFi DEX shit instead of letting users actually trade. Like that, 
<laughs> that's where this goes incentive wise. And then I assume all the dexes fail because I mean, how do you get value out if the miners get it all? You can't. He who runs the order book orders the trades. Speaking of ordering things, I ran. <laughs> has supposedly stepped up to the plate, uh, kind of like uh, the OFAC news that I think we're going to share here, and has said that tra transactions of cryptocurrencies which were mined outside of Iran are forbidden by their banking system. Uh, the translated quote goes, accordingly, authorized exchange offices and banks can make foreign exchange payments for import through cryptocurrencies mined in the country. But trading and buying and selling other cryptocurrencies are not allowed. So I think people are still digesting this. I haven't seen a really good English language source on this one. And whether this is just prohibiting such exchange offices and central banks from getting into the nitty gritty of trading, buying and selling uh, outside Iran. Uh, or exactly what, but this kind of smells like Bitcoin regionalism. It'll be fun as, as more and more banks, be they in Turkey or the United States or wherever, or mining pools or anybody starts to kind of show favoritism for localism. This is going to be hilarious to watch play out. How do they identify what was mined or not mined in Iran? Um, do they have a special Iranian mining pool? How, how are they going to know, um, you know, which payout from a Chinese mining pool was to an Iranian miner or not, or, or whether that Iranian miner has machines in Iran, like the entire, like, how do you implement this is like, this is inevitably going to require like them doing what Venezuela did, where we have this official pool. You can only use this. Maybe they'll get smart and just turn off the internet to the outside world. Because <laughs> that works. That'll be great. Their own worthless fork of Bitcoin. Well, speaking of which, Marathon mined the first OFAC compliant block, I hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so you may remember back in episodes 244 and 254 not long ago that Shinobi discussed how Marathon Patent Group and DMG's subsidiary, Blockseer, were forming a cooperative mining pool in North America. And as written in the esteemed Yahoo Finance, using DMG's proprietary patent pending technologies, the pool will also create transaction blocks that specifically omit any transactions deemed risky by wallet score and which may not meet OFAC standards. Um, and it's time for celebration, children, because on May 6th, um, they didn't put it on the 4th or the 5th of May, because apparently no Star Wars jokes, but the one and only block 682170 was mined by the Mara Pool and is officially the first OFAC compliant block as noted in the Coinbase, uh, praise the financial gods, forgive us our taint, and deliver us from cyber. Well, that is not the end of the story, though, um, because nothing goes untainted forever. Uh, when this was publicized, naturally, the response was to shake the foundations of this weird financial purity tag by sending Bitcoin to the address of the Coinbase, including at least one transaction that had an op return message written in Persian, uh, as far as I know, it apparently was established to be Persian. And Google Translate thinks it means, thanks for supporting our cause. No idea if this is authentic Persian or just someone wanting to troll with the squiggle text of the scaries, as they probably call it on Fox News. But either way, I love this idea of just completely demolishing uh, this idea of yeah, we're OFAC compliant because we checked all the transactions because we believe in financial surveillance and we believe in the idea of keeping 
scary transactions out of our blocks, even though technically in order to mine, you have to keep a record anyway of all of the tainted transactions and other blocks that get mined. So good for you. You've made a, you've made a big, uh, big scary win there, bros. Yeah, I'm loving this. Proving blacklist technology. This is innovation, right here. I just hope, though, as funny as the tainting the Coinbase address is, um, that everyone doing that kind of realizes they're being very counterproductive here. Like, let the miner who will refuse to take transaction fees from things um, earn less money. Like, let, let, let them do that. Don't send them money to make up for the money they won't make just to fuck with them. You are giving them money. I mean, yeah, it just also makes them less competitive because, think about it, they have to go through the mining process of just collecting the transactions in the first place, which is already an, a race, and then they are doing another thing where they hear the available transactions, which ones are baddie transactions, and they have to filter those out and then create a block. So it's like, it's just, it's inefficient. They're going to be on average slower because they have to do this extra process of scanning transactions with chain analysis software or whatever blockchain surveillance company is helping with this endeavor uh it's just gonna make them slower so i mean they're already losing in that way but i also find it hilarious that <laughs> putting in that effort they uh can still get completely uh uh owned by a person just sending a little bit of bitcoin um i wouldn't encourage people to send them a lot of Bitcoin, because if you do that, you're kind of making up for maybe some of the lost money that they <laughs> kind of uh, left on the table as a result of doing this process. But, you know, you can always send a uh, tiny, tiny dust, I guess. Let's do a dust attack in, in the proper way. Yeah, I let them fuck themselves. Like last time I looked, I think like coin joins are like five percent of transactions in blocks. Like let them keep getting dumber and and leaving more money on the table, and just let them be non-competitive. I haven't kept up what it means with what it means to be OFAC compliant, but at one point they had a very short list of some bad person addresses. And what it meant to be OFAC compliant was we're making sure no transaction is coming from or going to bad person addresses. And there were like eight or 10 of them. So again, a very technological marvel here, guys. Much, much technology, much wow. An OFAC compliant tag is about as useful as a virginity test, which is to say useless. Uh, yeah. Let's just say... Um... Let's see how this goes. Let's see what the incentives do. And hopefully um, these idiots just go out of business. All right. Speaking of going out of business, mm -hmm. I hear New York is uh, adding some innovation to their mining landscape. Yeah. So they passed some idiotic bill in 2019 to give the entire state... Um, carbon emission goals and now they're pushing a bill to um create a three-year moratorium for any cryptocurrency mining um until they can reconcile it with this oh holy carbon target and um yeah nothing would be able to come online after the end of it without a very thorough um assessment of its environmental impacts comprehensively in, in all ways and um yeah the thing that instigated this is a coal plant coal being converted to a natural gas plant with a fraction of the carbon emissions and pollutants and nonsense that is an integral fucking power plant that will be there bitcoin mining or not because people in the state of new york need fucking electricity 
that started mining because they realized, oh, there's just power burning here and we could make more money with it because it's burning anyway. So the state of New York wants to be completely retarded and just kneecap themselves and chase away all Bitcoin mining, all the potential revenue they could get off of this, all the development that would come around with this, um, all the fucking benefits to their electricity grid, to power production capacity in the state. They want to completely kneecap themselves and chase all of that away. So have fun, morons. Beep, beep, wrong thing detected. I don't understand how this is supposed to be different from just running a data center. It's it's the exact same environmental equivalent, uh, except, you know, Bitcoin produces Satan or, or other cryptocurrencies do. I don't even exactly know. But it's like, it's ridiculous, man. Like, this is an already existing power plant that will, it still has to be there. Like it still needs to power a bunch of people's homes and they're losing their mind that something that was a huge reduction in pollution and emissions based on what that facility used to generate power with and shrieking just no, 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 not good enough. This bill is pure virtue signaling. So congrats, New York. Uh, You know? I, I don't mind if you want to cut yourself out of uh, a healthy chunk of the new economy. Feel free. People are leaving for a reason. Yeah, well, just a reminder, New York is crypto Azkaban, which means that it does not need power because it is fueled by <laughs> it is fueled by the screams and misery that the dementors <laughs> suck out of everyone who lives there. Supposedly, upstate New York runs on a lot of hydropower. So somebody was commenting about how if this actually came to pass, they would ultimately be adding to the carbon footprint of Bitcoin at scale because you're taking away the ease of use of their hydropower resources. I mean, they're just fucking themselves. Like the bit license is already kind of chasing away a lot of the financial side of this space. They want to do the same thing to mining, which could have a fuck ton of indirect benefits, like financially and incentive wise, that would materially improve like production capacity, like the ability to manage the power grid. They want to chase that out too. In, in a country where like when when the hell was the last time we actually looked at infrastructure improvements stay woke broke boys but like some parts of the u.s seem really dead set on just committing seppuku capital goes where it's treated well uh bitcoin mining uh cryptocurrency mining is no different mm-hmm. well i guess a quick neat update um so, a meat update. Week. A meat? Meat. 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 What kind of meat? Meat, meat. Fuck you. My dry age steaks are mine and mine alone. Meat, meat. Anyway, though, um, Sea Lightning um, was used to open the first dual funded lightning channel on the main chain um, with an experimental support um, for the new spec proposal that we went over, I think, in the the last episode for dual funding. And um, yeah, pretty much right now, anybody who wants to um, go tinker with things that are reckless, um, you can go flip that flag on and play with it now. Um, And hopefully um, next month, this should be properly implemented without needing the optional flag in the next Sea Lightning release, um, as well as a plugin for Sea Lightning's plugin system to be able to set policies on how much money to put into a channel somebody proposes with you under what circumstances, um, et cetera. And um, hopefully um, either LND or uh, Eclair can uh, 
get this implemented so that we start having wider support aside from just sea lightning and the spec can actually move from a proposal to a solid part of the spec. Um, so, woohoo! This opens so many fun doors. Just saving money, easier liquidity assignment. Um, also, just a lot of fun stuff in terms of hybridizing coin joins with channel opening and closing. So, could get very fun and interesting. Yep, definitely like the sound of this. Well, I mean, like with this kind of logic. And the ability with Sea Lightning, at least, and I would like to see other implementations um, kind of start thinking in terms of coordination mechanisms for this. But like, yeah, if, if everybody opening and closing and moving liquidity on chain um, for Lightning can be done collaboratively in a coin join, like we, we can start looking at some very fun dynamics for improving privacy holistically. Good days. Are you ready for what seems like weekly NIDIC news? In this episode of Banking on Bitcoin. Dun, dun, dun. So uh, the big guys in the room, NIDIG, have said they are partnering with uh, Fidelity National Information Services, which is a sub-branch of... The fidelity we know and love that manages all sorts of banking and retirement account type relationships to offer Bitcoin in the coming months uh, to hundreds of banks who have evidently enrolled in their program to get set up to do this. Uh, who is Fidelity National Information Services? Uh, they are evidently the manufacturer of back-end banking products that banks use to run their accounting, uh, sometimes for the whole bank, and plug in to, uh, I, I don't even know which systems to, to call out here, but um, plug into the U.S. banking system. So they're saying that this is going to enable uh, via essentially drop-ins that they offer that are compatible with these back-end banking services uh, for hundreds of banks to bring online services to customers. Uh, evidently, Fidelity National Information Services already backs 300 million checking accounts, which is a preposterously huge number considering what there's 330 plus million people in the United States. Uh, so they have some pretty serious penetration here. Uh, so a quote from Yan Zhao, president of NIDIG. This is not just banks thinking that their clients want Bitcoin. They're saying, we need to do this because we see the data, Zhao said. They're saying, I'm sorry, they're seeing deposits go to the Coinbases and Galaxies and Krakens of the world. So as we occasionally speculate on here, banks are taking notice of where their customers are sending their money and saying, you know what, we would kind of like a little cut of that and enter somebody like NIDIG offering software services uh, that can fit into the existing backend products that uh, many of these smaller banks already use. And uh, boom, you've got essentially white label software services so grandma can go down to the bank and buy Bitcoin. Um, it's it's going to be really interesting to see this stuff come to market. Uh, another interesting tidbit from the article was after rolling out initial Bitcoin product, NIDIG plans on other services, including debit card rewards paid in Bitcoin and a new type of bank account that is FDIC insured but pays interest in Bitcoin. So NIDIG, uh, definitely trying to get the banking system to run on Bitcoin. See, the, the thing that really worries me here is too much concentration into a single custodian. Like, I think this is the same kind of like dynamic in terms of incentives and risk models as ETFs. Like very good i guess in that if you see these types of services start getting offered everywhere but it's very bad 
if instead of all these banks custodying their customers shit that's all quietly like put in one master vault that has one entity in the background securing all of that that's like the same type of stupidity if things go that way is uh, what turkey's doing with like we have the central custodian and you have to keep them here except it's just not mandated it would it just organically goes that way you know what i mean yeah diversity of backend providers in this marketplace is nothing but good and i can't imagine coinbase institutional not white labeling a product like this i know we covered a story like a couple months ago of a bank that might have been in arizona uh who had essentially done a product that tied into coinbase institutional and uh my commentary then was the same as i would say now is they've got to come out with a white label product like this what's notable about nidig is that they're plugging into existing banking back-end software which probably makes it much easier for banks to do accounting on this sort of thing but i can't imagine a world where the other major institutional custody providers uh perhaps even back to fidelity themselves or state street on top of gemini offering similar things to different levels of institution and then to your point i would imagine also that longer term the largest banks the the jpms or the cities or the wells fargo's as they come and and look at this space i have to imagine they're going to build their own back end for this given time but if they want to compete quickly then it almost makes sense for this to be a two uh step kind of phase transition where first they use somebody else's services because they're already built first of all so they can start capturing market and they're proven reliable and then transition to their own but it takes a long time to build out anything like this in house so if if they're going to wait and not use somebody else's services they're going to miss this cycle cuz it's going to take them a year plus to build this out for themselves mhm mm I mean, ultimately, there's nothing any of us can do except just hope the incentives lead to everybody doing that. You know what I mean? Grandma, come by my sats. All right, next up. Twitter, not letting you tip people, I hear. Yep. So they have integrated um, a bunch of different things. Um, <clears throat> Cash App, PayPal patreon um a few other payment platforms i think venmo and bandcamp too um into a bandcamp. feature called tip Dead. jar <laughs> so that um you know you can directly just tip people money through the twitter interface um and really i think obviously no duh um it goes without saying that cash app being integrated there it's a matter of time before bitcoin is zipping around um this way um but yeah um one specific thing to be aware of with this do not use it with paypal um do not ever under any circumstances because paypal is engineered by morons and will literally give the person you send money to your address that's that's right. When the receiver clicks receive and approves that, they see your home address. Um, so yeah, do not use PayPal with this um, with random people on the internet. They will find out where you live. But beyond the mind-blowingly stupid architecture of PayPal there, um, you know, just how this is done in terms of just a little API URI forwarder to other services, like it's nothing like baking a wallet or this feature directly into Twitter itself. Um, oh yeah, this just screams direct integration of Bitcoin, like self-sovereign managed Bitcoin of lightning through this API because nothing's getting baked directly into Twitter. And things like LN URL, like the little custodial stacks that you can run in this space for things like Lightning, um, 
yeah, this just seems like a perfect way for Bitcoin to start creeping into a platform like Twitter without Twitter actually having to directly integrate Bitcoin itself. Like, nice. you know, like yeah, they just let's... have the, the API and Bitcoin can just be one of the things. And let's hope it eats everything else. Get your uh, tweet quality up, boys and girls. Earn those tips. I think this is going to be a really short episode today. That's what you think. Uh, the next one, I think it's a continuation of one we talked about a couple of shows back about Kraken and Kraken at the time fighting an IRS Jundo summons. Mm -hmm. So, um, federal district court in Northern California has approved the John Doe IRS summons, um, for, or not summons, um, subpoena for Kraken. Um, so yeah, they're going to have to cough up records on anybody from 2016 to 2020 who did over $20,000 of transactions, um, in any given year. And you're going to have a rough time if you didn't pay your taxes on that. Didn't they get the scope reduced? I think they were fighting to get the scope reduced, but this story doesn't reference that history, and it implies that they lost that. Well, is it possible? Because um, I, I included this in my newsletter about Kraken getting the same request. Is it possible that the DOJ press announcement was just delayed because the the other one for circle was published on i think may 1st or something or the very very end of april no it would have been the end of no the beginning of april um but we already knew about the kraken one so this announcement seems kind of to me like an announcement of just the fact that the subpoena was approved Mm -hmm. Um, so it might actually, it might actually be a, outdated in terms of the status of the case. So the, the reduction in scope could still be in play. This is just an announcement that Kraken was also served with their request. I don't oh. feel like the scope is getting reduced. Like, I think this 20 K limit is pretty much standard at this point. Like this is what Coinbase got hit with. This is what circle recently got hit with. Like, well, Yes, but Coinbase, remember Coinbase was in court for quite a while and they got the scope reduced and the DOJ approving the subpoena from the IRS does not, or not the, well, John Doe summons, does not, because, uh, I mean, in the, it sounded in the Kraken case like the judge responsible for handling that uh, already agreed to reduce the scope so unless the judge went back on their own decision that seems a bit weird but either way they should try to they should both try to get the scope reduced coinbase's scope was reduced though to 20k from everything remember like uh, back when the irs first went after coinbase for that they literally wanted everything on everyone that story yes doesn't have any dates in it so I, it I is always say. possible they may reduce it more let's see next up galaxy buys bitgo a match made in outer space yeah so this is fun um galaxy digital is buying out bitco for 1.2 billion dollars in a cash and stock deal um with 265 million in cash and issuing 33.8 million new shares um pretty much um galaxy is going to roll bitco into um the mining operations they're running um through blockstream um their investment um and trading services pretty much um yeah um bitgo and the custody stack they have is i think the last piece to turn galaxy digital into a fully vertically integrated company in this space um like at this point i think they quite literally have services that touch every market in this space um mining all the way up the whole financial stack above that so um yeah 
um, especially given the fact that they are traded publicly in Canada. And I think they're actually um, in motions for a, a public filing here in the U.S. Um, yeah, um, somehow Novogratz kind of just hobbled this together to, I think, be something that could potentially compete with Coinbase on that type of scale, if not quite in the exact same um like market sense, um, at least like it, they're going to be that type of scope of value. And so, uh, yeah, um, it's kind of interesting to me how he pulled this off. Cause honestly, um, never really paid much attention to this company beyond just when headlines popped up, but now, um, yeah, they have kind of integrated all the things. I, for one, support diversity in our crypto overlords. Well, it's like, this is what kind of worries me in terms of like the big custodians that are going to be behind all of this bank integration shit is how, like, how hard does that roll up with the buyouts and the acquisitions and shit? Yeah, I guess my hope is that we're seeing some a la Coinbase, a la Gemini, a la Galaxy, perhaps, that are too big for a bank to ultimately buy them out. Because uh, the more cornerstones like this that we get, the more diverse of an ecosystem we'll end up with in terms of products, in terms of uh, security and storage solutions. Distributed is probably better because the banks, the biggest banks will come and build their own too. Just a weird balancing game we're going to have to play when as we go through this Bitcoin bank phase, like if that concentrates too much, that becomes a very tender, vulnerable spot. Yep, agreed. And they're going to be incentivized to play well together anyway. So to me, I guess having these legacy crypto participants, the more the better, because they may act as something of a counterbalance to the traditional banks. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, you want to take us into the next one, and I need to uh, grab another bottle of water real quick. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, so DGC, Digital Currency Group, the uh, mentors of such exchange-traded products as GBTC, uh, Akkad, the way to invest your 401k in Bitcoin, um, has come out with some news. Uh, they evidently certified themselves to buy back up to 500 million worth of GBTC shares. Uh, this is an addition uh, to their last self-certification to buy back 250 million worth. And uh, I think I had read they had bought something like 192 million of that 250 uh, that they had previously authorized. Uh, this is back from the 3rd of May, uh, so they've, they've got another 550 million maybe that they can load at into the cannons. Uh, this is because GBTC has been trading at a significant discount premium, as pretty much anybody involved in this particular trade knows uh, and has noticed. Um, it's been trading around negative 15% premium, maybe a little under that lately, uh, which is of concern to anybody who wants to have Bitcoin price exposure uh, backed by physical Bitcoin and uh, be able to own it in a traditional brokerage account. So uh, yeah, I've, I've definitely heard some commentary on this, uh, especially around this not being enough to close a premium gap, but basically try to stop extreme flow out of uh, a hemorrhaging wound that is, uh, I guess, Canada having Bitcoin ETFs before the U.S. gets Bitcoin ETFs. So uh, best of luck to you, Digital Currency Group, uh, buying all of the Bitcoin you custody back at a significant discount. Uh, kudos to you, your geniuses, and uh, I hope you get super rich. Yeah, I, I think at this point with how long that premium has been keep or er, keeping negative, like, I mean, it, there is some fundamental macro market change that has happened here in, in a shift in demand. And it, like, 
there is literally no other fucking explanation at this point for this premium staying like this for so long. Yeah, I think it is completely explained by those Canadian ETFs because if you want, most U.S. folks can buy them in their brokerage accounts. So you can just get exact Bitcoin spot exposure, price exposure uh, in an ETF product that's on a, a known exchange. And the SEC dragon feet has been now that money flows to Canada instead of to the U.S. market. So I don't know that that will necessarily spur them to act anytime soon. But, I mean, do you not want that money, New York guys? It's your call. I mean, at this point, they seem pretty dead set on shooting their own dick off up there. I don't want New York money. You know, the, the U.S. has projected power based on its financial system for a long time. So in this case, they're just kissing free money goodbye. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, if, and when all of this gets wrapped up in a bow. All right, next one. This took a little bit of research for me. Uh, we've got a headline. EIB which is the European Investment Bank, issues 100 million euro digital bond on Ethereum. So I went and read about three write-ups on this because the details were, were scantish. And uh, I, was, I was trying to figure out what actually happened here. So first of all, the European Investment Bank is the European Union's investment bank and is owned by the EU member states, according to Wikipedia. It is one of the largest supranational lenders in the world. It is a not-for-profit organization which funds uh, projects that achieve the policy aims of the European Union through loans, guarantees, and technical assistance. Thank you, Wikipedia. Uh, so on April 27th, the European Investment Bank launched its first ever digital bond on a decentralized public blockchain. Get excited. Uh, the issuance was announced and made specifically for the registration and settlement of digital bonds placed on a public blockchain. The launch was made possible in collaboration with such leading industry participants as Goldman Sachs, San Ander, and Society General. Uh, so there we go. We've got Goldman Sachs, major U.S. investment bank, San Ander. I think they are Spanish and Society General out of France. Uh, the accompanying announcement by the EIB regarding the issuance of European digital bonds also states uh, that they have partnered with Bank de France, as in the French Central Bank, uh, for streamlining payments from the underwriter, the PP, uh, by using a public blockchain and a dedicated central bank digital currency as part of its program for digital currency development. Now, this pricked my ears up because I have yet to see anything authoritative on a CBDC shipping on Ethereum. So I read about three different versions of this story and that line is, I was really interested. Are people gonna send them Tether to get these bond tokens? Uh, Cause we covered the Japanese company that issued a bond uh, not long ago. That might've been on Liquid. Um, and that was a relatively small bond. That was a $10 million bond. Uh, so they're definitely testing the waters. Uh, and they were talking about being able to do coupon payments on that blockchain. Uh, the three stories I read were very light on details. Nobody explained central bank digital currency sitting on Ethereum. Um, it's a two-year bond. Uh, they don't say whether it has coupon payments over those two years. Typically, two-year bonds would. Um, and then let's see the statement issued by the EIB contains a framework of the transaction for the purchase of EIB digital bonds, which entails the release of bond tokens on the blockchain. Investors will then purchase and pay for the security tokens using additional fiat currencies, the story said. So that's unexplained. That that to me implies you're paying for them not on a blockchain, but they're getting issued to you on the blockchain. That would make sense to me in that my guess is they would want to vet the people holding these. 
um, if they're anything like a traditional issue, uh, but I don't know. And then it says the joint lead managers will then settle the underwriting against the issuer using a CBDC. So I, I, again, I'm completely in the dark and, and I want to, correct, they're not real, but I wanted to talk about this because they bothered to print this story in several different publications. And to me, that means, did that mean they just gave themselves a two year horizon to actually issue some sort of, of CBDC tokens on Ethereum so they can actually pay these bonds back? Uh, this story is more questions than answers, uh, but definitely they're trying to go out there and get press issue bond tokens on a public ledger and then claim that they're going to fulfill them using a CBDC. So they've given themselves two years to make a giant ass of themselves when they try to do this on Ethereum and then find out that like you have this ETH gas price that costs hundreds of dollars and you pay it whether your transaction goes through or not and just look like incompetent morons. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, and again, it sounds like they took traditional fiat money payments probably out of the banking system for this. So I imagine their bond issuance says they can fail back to that. Um, just wanted to bring it up because, uh, and definitely question it. Yeah, I mean, that is really weird. Like not having another thing to interact with on a blockchain, like that's half the reason for doing something like this. Like didn't the, the DAWA um, like literally use like a yen stable coin for that? That may have been the case. I'm forgetting the details of how that one worked, but I, I think you're correct. Usually for these types of things, they're very concerned about vetting who gets to buy them because um, different rules apply depending on whether you're an accredited investor or maybe you're a government. And usually, say, the European Central Bank wouldn't want to pay out interest to somebody like the country of Iran coming and buying your bonds, right? Like you might be a sanctioned state or something. So I, I'm interested in what this means. Hopefully we end up hearing more about this in two years. Mm. The failure of issuing bonds on Ethereum. Well, we know some popcorn is coming at some point. Yep. We'll hear more. All so right. Ready speak. for a fun one? Yeah. Popcorn at the helm. So, um, there is a pipeline that runs from Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, has branches into Tennessee and Georgia through South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, up to New Jersey. This pipeline delivers 45% of the fuel used on the East Coast. Um, Friday, they had to shut down the entire pipeline network because of a ransomware attack. Um, and I, I believe they said that the issue was with um, their business systems, but they shut down everything, um, including all of the shit actually managing the pipelines to try to prevent the ransomware from spreading into other systems. Now, because a lot of this shit is a long lag time before something actually gets to a consumer, probably not going to cause any kind of fuel supply disruption or any price disruption. But one of the most critical types of infrastructure in this country that half of the East Coast is dependent on literally had to get shut down because of a ransomware attack. You know, like it's been a while since like content in the space really addresses them beyond just, oh, another one, like the, the whole, oh, new thing kind of wore off about it, but like they're still happening and they are reaching into and infecting more and more critical systems. Like it is just a matter of time before an incident like this blows up 
and causes real disruption and that will be a really fun narrative to deal with yeah i don't build pipeline control systems often but when i do i build them on windows <laughs> come on guys you probably need to look into more hardened infrastructure control systems uh i get the windows is legacy i get the best shit you know the people you hired in the 1990s understand how to use that but it's it's probably time to start thinking about tra uh, transitioning some of this stuff over to more hardened operating environments yep but i mean like you, you know what i mean it's like it's a matter of time before one of these attacks actually has material consequences beyond some local jurisdiction you know people getting irritated and a headline it, it's inevitable and like just think about how the market is going to react to that regulators are going to react to that people are going to react to that like it is an inevitable thing that will come yep and it's a full-on national security issue when it comes to just that much gas diesel and i don't know what else they ship on this pilot network it's like jet fuel basically everything that powers the economy is uh at the uh can be stopped at the whim of somebody encrypting your hard drives. Not a tenable way to run a civilization. And I guarantee you the response is not going to be, hey, maybe we should start taking technological security a lot more serious. It's going to be Bitcoin bad. Yeah, you, you got to consider the security of things to be of similar class to power plants and the like. And uh, hopefully we're getting there. Well, we'll find out. Let's see. Last story is a fun one. It is in your potential top indicators section. So, uh, what, FTX got the naming rights on the Miami Heat's uh, stadium not too long ago. Now the New York Giants is teaming up with Grayscale Investments for the NFL's first cryptocurrency partnership. So, so uh, numbers. But as of April 30th, the Giants announced an exclusive partnership and the first of the kind for the NFL in which Grayscale official digital currency asset management partner. Say that quickly five times. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, the details on this are light, but Grayscale is going to give the Giants a bunch of money, and uh, it sounds like they're going to sponsor spring training. So woot woot, and uh, I don't know. We'll. Uh, We'll get to also sponsor the Giants Foundation golf outing. Very nice. Very nice. Love it. I would really like a company to do something in this space for public outreach that isn't just executed in the cringiest way possible. Like, can we can we finally have that, please? Well, it's definitely been interesting to see more and more athletes uh, in the Twitterverse anyway, talk about getting parts of their salary paid in Bitcoin, just expressing interest or uh, solidarity with Bitcoin. And uh, now we've got inroads into NBA and NFL. So Major League Baseball, where you at, guys? Like, you might want to think about this. You might want to catch up. Um, this to me is a read on these companies and kind of the scale we're at now and where we are on the adoption curve and that they are thinking it's worthwhile to get into the public consciousness like this mm -hmm. eternal september it will never end why won't it just end because grandma don't own no bitcoin yet. coming soon <sighs> Who knows, maybe grandpa will buy it first. Leave your comments in the chat below. Will grandpa be grandma to Bitcoin? Find out on the next episode of Bitcoin Boomers. Well, meme time, final thought time. Don't all go at once now.
I have one. Go. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, Mitch Altman has recently opened a Patreon. If you don't know who he is, he is a maker, one of the most popular uh, in the world. Actually, he's run a lot of workshop workshops to teach people how to solder and all of that kind of stuff. And he started a Patreon so that he can keep doing that and making workshops and stuff that he's done for a very long time. So if you're into that kind of thing, I would recommend checking it out. Hardware tinkering is fun when you don't break things. Don't be clock blocked. You got anything for us, bud? Uh, I'm, I'm light. I've, uh, I've been enjoying the action the last couple of weeks. Uh, I love that everybody is hilariously rich and, uh, I wish everyone the best of luck in their shit coinery or Bitcoinery. Yep. I need to go, you know what? Today's the day. I need to go dig through some boxes and see if I can find a piece of paper with free house on it. Woof. Could be a really good day. All right, well, hope everybody enjoyed. Catch you later, punks. Bye. Peace.